Hey gang, this is Dwayne, and these are the three things that you have to do to land your first IT job. So first thing you want to do is figure out what field do you want to be in and what lane do you want to be in. Do you want to do networking? Do you want to do cybersecurity? And once you figure out that lane, acquire that knowledge for you to break inside that field. You want to be a developer? You probably need to start coding. You want to be a help desk lead? You need to get really good at troubleshooting. You want to be an ethical hacker? You need to get really good at hacking tools as well as policies and regulations in regards to data security. No matter the field that you want to break into, you're going to have to educate yourself. With the internet, there is a wealth of information at your fingertips. You can listen to podcasts, you can read blogs, you can watch videos such as this one on YouTube or LinkedIn, or you can even enroll in a course. Forgot to tell you, I'm Dwayne from ITMedicine.com and I have a multitude of courses that help people just like you break into IT. Number two is networking. There's a saying that says your network equals your net worth. A lot of times it's just about the people you know. You have to have the skill set, you have to have the knowledge, but you also have to be top of mind with the people that matter. So if you are an ethical hacker, if there's an ethical hacking position, you should be top of mind. People should, you know, the hiring managers, whoever is the decision maker should say, hey, this guy or this girl, it would be a great fit for our organization, right? So networking, don't be afraid, don't be shy, um, don't be weird either, right? Uh, just connect with people and build a rapport with them, right? So if they need something, be there when they need something. If they need advice, advise them, uh, help them out, and most likely they'll help you out. And with the internet, it makes it super easy. It, you don't have to be uh, super awkward, you don't have to go to meetup events. If you do that, that's cool too. Or you go to meetups and stuff, but you can connect to anybody you want to just by being on your cell phone. So I would say that you can start networking right here. If you want to be an ethical hacker, start um, connecting with people that are ethical hackers. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to tag a few uh, people in the IT space that I think you should be following and that I think um, could help you along in your journey. So those could be your first couple connections. But after that, start connecting with recruiters in, um, in your city. Start connecting with um, other IT pros in, in your city or in the city that you want to uh, be located in. Or they don't have that be in your city. Just if they seem like they're knowledgeable, if they seem like somebody that you can gain some um, insight from, I would definitely say start connecting. So pretty much, um, even if you're an introvert, even if you don't like talking, no big deal. Just connect with these people, you know, tell them your backstory. And a lot of people, especially here um, on LinkedIn and uh, in the YouTube community, um, really um, will help you out. Also, um, you know, I know Facebook, you know, some people like it, some people don't. But there are a lot of really, 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 really strong communities on Facebook as well as far as IT um, is concerned. So you can go ahead and try that out as well. So go ahead and get on Facebook. Um, I actually have a Facebook group as well. I'll put the link in um, the description and you can head over there and get inside of a community of people that, you know, want to see each other win. So with networking, pretty much reach out to as many people as possible that are in the field that you want to be in and just start um, talking. And maybe, you know, through advice, through tutelage, you can, you know, figure out new positions, you can figure out uh, new skill sets and pretty much just help you along your way. You need the team. You need a team whether you're running a business, whether if you're looking to, uh, for a job. You need a team of people around you that's going to be supportive and help you along the way. Next up is going to be making sure that your resume is optimized. Making sure that it gets seen by the right people and that when it gets seen that it has eye-catching things and it actually tells your entire story. Somebody should be able to look at your resume and tell if you will be a good fit for the job or not. So a lot of times the mistake that people make is just pretty much having a resume. This is my resume no matter what it is, right? If uh, it's a plumbing job, here go a resume. If it's a if it's a damn uh, uh, job to be an astronaut, here go a resume. If it's a job to be um, a cybersecurity analyst, here go a resume. You should have a tailored resume for each position. Okay, um, I actually put another link in the description below because um, I have 
a quick little trick, a quick little tip that will help you get past the resume bots. If you aren't aware, there are, you know, to increase or decrease time, I guess, um, there's scanning software that scans to see if you would be a good candidate before you even talk to a human, right? So if you don't have certain keywords and if you don't have certain phrases inside of your resume, you will never see a real person. The software says, hey, this guy or this girl isn't a good fit, so they just pretty much scrap your resume. So you can go ahead and look at that um, to figure out how to get past the resume box, right? But one of the major things is, like I said, tailoring your resume to the actual position. So make sure that you're not just, you know, got a cookie cutter resume and you're just throwing it to um, every position. Every position, you should definitely um, tailor your resume. You got to apply to maybe hundreds of jobs, you know, to really get the job that you're looking for, to really get the position that you're looking for. So don't get complacent. Oh, I filled out one or two applications. You know, you may have to uh, fill out hundreds, you know, thousand applications. Then, like I said, um, with the quick little fits that I have, um, and you already got a resume, and a lot of times you can just upload your resume to an application. It kind of may sound like a lot, but you can easily, easily, especially if you ain't got no damn job, you can easily do a hundred. I mean, that is gonna be your job. It's finding a job. You can easily do a hundred resumes, a uh, hundred uh, applications a day. Hundred applications a day. Um, if you don't have a job, that need to be, you know, you need to be doing it. A um, hundred applications a day, and then to piggyback off what I said before, meeting or connecting with five to ten new people a day. All right. Um, so optimize your resume, and if you're still not getting any traction, just saying like stuff isn't working, I would advise um, enlisting the services of a resume writer, a career coach. Um, I'll actually tag a few um, that I that I um, use for my students, and um, yeah, man, just you know go the extra mile to make sure that you get the job of your dream. I know I said I was only gonna do three, but I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. Another way to land your first IT job is by shadowing, right? Let's say wherever you work currently, if you currently have a job or even if you don't have a job, whether it's a mom and pop shop or Google, everywhere, every um, section, every business has an IT um, office, has an IT team, whether it's one guy or if it's 50 people, right? And you won't get paid probably, and you may have to do this before work or after work, but you can shadow those people just to see what the day-to-day -day is like, right? So you can see what does the networking guy do? What does um, the chief information officer do? What does the security analyst do? For one, to see, do I actually want to do this? You know what I'm saying? To see, if I, do you actually want to do this job? Because sometimes, you know, people look at the money, oh, I can make $100,000 or I can make 50, 60, whatever, whatever your, you know, uh, pay rate is. And they're like, oh, that's cool. But they don't see that the work that goes into that. Or they're like, oh, I don't really want to do this, right? So a lot of times if you go ahead and talk to the IT team leader, talk to the people in IT and say, hey, would you mind if I just came over here and maybe shadow one of you guys for 30 minutes a day or 45 minutes a day? Um, so on and so forth. Like I said, this is probably gonna have to be done um, during you know your off hours because I'm pretty sure your boss or wherever you know you work for isn't gonna want you to uh, be do you know being nosy in the IT department and you ain't doing what you actually getting paid for, right? And a lot of the time that doesn't have to be inside your organization because maybe you like I don't want you know to be overshadowing them and then maybe my job I think I'm looking for another job. So sometimes you can actually you know shadow or you know ask for internships. Um, at other organizations just so you can see the inner workings. So just a brief um, recap. First thing you need to do is educate yourself. Second thing you need to do is um, get a robust network. Third thing you need to do is um, optimize your resume. And then last but not least, you can shadow or do internships. So this is Dwayne from itmasterkey.com. If you have any other suggestions, any tips, Go ahead and um, leave it in the comments. Make sure that you like the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and head over to itmasterkey.com if you're looking inside of a course. And other than that, I'll see you in class.